No, I, I, I don't, I don't think this is not Rod Stewart at all. I, I, I think he got ripped off, man. Sorry. Hi, I am John Fugelsang here in VH1 Archives, deep in the bowels of the root cellar of rock and roll. And today we have a very special show for you. It's one of those TV programs that was seen once and talked about forever. It is the Dick Cavett Show that was taped the afternoon the Woodstock Festival ended. Now, I want to get right to the show, but first I have to explain one point. Joni Mitchell, who was on this show and is terrific, missed the Woodstock Festival because her manager said that if she went, she might miss the chance to be on the Dick Cavett Show. And I mean, come on, what's one cheesy festival on some muddy farm with a bunch of drug-crazed hippie kids compared to a chance to be on camera with Dick? So Joni stayed in her hotel room, watched footage of the concert on the TV news, and wrote the song Woodstock all about the party she was missing. Joni's manager, by the way, wound up becoming one of the more successful moguls in the music business. His name was, and is, David Gett. Gee, I, I must thank all of you for waiting this long to see me. <laughs> really exciting. Um, he, uh, let me tell you who my guests are today. I, I cannot make it with this scar. Yeah! I'll tell you. Uh, I really can't. I, uh, I, there's a very small interior decorator has the apartment next to me. This is his bedspread. <laughs> and he loaned it to me. But we have the Jefferson Airplane, the great Jefferson. Yeah. The marvelous. There they are. Morning, Grace. Oh, uh, Joni Mitchell, uh, another remarkable musician. Joni Mitchell. I'll, I'll tell you what. Why don't we go away, have a message, and come back? Might be fun. Everybody is always trying to define today's rock music and their phrases like hard rock and folk rock and acid rock and revolution rock and schlock rock and um, I don't know, we, we have none of that on the show today, but we do have some giants in the field and I would like you to meet, they're not in the field now, they were this weekend. What's happening? Will you welcome one of the greatest exports ever to come out of San Francisco, the great Jefferson Airplane.
always wanted to say on television that nobody ever gave you the chance to Yes, do yes, I got what one. What am I doing? I got one. They just passed out in the executive room upstairs. <laughs> so, did it feel good? At four o'clock in the morning. Four in the morning? <laughs> in the rain. Yeah. Yeah. 7.30 in the morning. It, it felt good. Try 7.30 or 8. Right. It felt good. I still have my mud. Did it still felt good. <laughs> I my mind. I wasn't there. Uh, did you go on at 8? Uh, You're yeah. kidding about that. Yeah, we were Sun, yeah, 15 hours. Oh. Days. We fun. did a religious thing. It was Sunday morning. You did? Yeah. Something, um... Yeah. Morning raga. Works. I see. Well, I, is it weird to work at that hour? I mean, yeah. can you get anything... Well, have you ever worked at that hour? <laughs> I haven't done anything at that hour. <laughs> we won't elaborate on that. Well, how was the uh, festival in general? Would you consider it a... Success. It was incredible. Yeah. It's probably the strangest thing that's ever happened in the world. Everybody said there was some. <laughs> Can I describe to you what it looked like flying in on a helicopter, man? It yes. looked like an, an encampment of the Macedonian army on the Greek hills. <laughs> crossed with a with the biggest batch of gypsies you ever saw. Now, was, how did you get out? I hear that they're still trooping uh, back. It, it was, yeah, fast. <laughs> it was amazing. There's Just a busload amazing. of people who were who thought they had tickets to the Lawrence Welk show and they're still... <laughs> uh, was the sound okay and could everybody hear? And oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyone? Oh, yeah. Bill Hanley sound. Chip Monk, also. Mr. Yes. Chip Monk. Chip yeah. never lets you down. Never, man, never. He's I hate those sure. concerts where you, after the 10th row, you can't hear, and the act comes out and says, good evening, pass it on. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do, Grace, in your uh, off hours at the festival? Get on. <laughs> Does anyone want to answer Jim, for her? Listen, Jim, I wish I could tell you. You've got to learn my name, Miss Joplin. Calling me Jim like she was that. Good. Uh, I was going to ask you something. Do you ever, as a group, uh, ever get asked to endorse a political candidate the way actors do or certain singers? We laugh. Have you? No. Usually try not to. Do you? Why? Best. How many of them? How many of them have you seen that that you would endorse? Yeah. I'd sing for Pierre Trudeau. Yeah. 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 Now Pierre Trudeau is another. I one. would sing for Pierre Trudeau. <laughs> he's yeah. He's he's very good. A conspicuous. Good I guess everybody knows you're from Canada. Your work is sort of unpolitical in general, isn't it? You don't. Well, yeah. I, I sing mostly about love and things that I can understand. I don't understand politics, mainly because in Canada we just never do anything very political. The biggest political news that I can remember ever there was the choosing of the flag. Mm -hmm. And that <laughs> took three years. And, <laughs> and they Great finally arguments. chose one that none of us liked. <laughs> and it faded and everything. And, oh well. But we're still here to the south of you protecting your border. <laughs> <laughs> when you're up around uh, playing concerts and touring around the country, do you still get guys yelling at you, get a haircut, and... Uh... Sometimes you get, hey, Ringo, did your barber die? <laughs> Marvelous, witty fellow. <laughs> Either that or, or eh, hippie creeps. It, what do you do about that? Suppose you're walking down a street. Uh, we used to collect And them. three guys come toward you, and they have shoot, crew cuts. Shoot and... them <laughs> How's that? Peace and love, flowers. Now, what would you do? <laughs> Actually, if you're in a menacing situation, I say, hey, Split, weirdo, you know. Split, leave, go away, yeah. instantly, be someplace else as rapidly as possible. <laughs> Get into the center of another city. Yes, that's the yes. one. That's yeah. what I always do when I'm menaced. The best thing to do. There's like more people up there than there are, there are within there are in San Francisco. Did you consider that as a city, man? Saturday. Say, how do you mean? It, well, I mean, for instance, like about two nights ago, that place up there was the second biggest city in New York. Yeah. And it had no violence. Did the mayor show up? I don't think it was his kind of city. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, you, uh, do you read your reviews? Do you like to read analyses of your work and critics who try to say what it is you're saying and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Larry Feather once said we sounded like a cow kicking down a backyard fence. Mm -hmm. That was one of our more favorite. A cow kicking down a backyard fence? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try not to pay too much attention to them if we can help it. Do you generally believe in astrology? Hands. You he do. really looks like a lion, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's a Leo, David. He's a Leo? Mm-hmm. 
And Grace is a Scorpio. I'm a Scorpio. Oh, I got to read you this. I found this thing about Scorpio. You're a Scorpio? I, I am too, as a matter of fact. Watch out for Scorpio. This is from a, a, a book on astrology. Uh, Scorpios are powerful, forthright, passionate individuals who would never carry a pocketbook which did not harmonize with their suits. They've really got money now. I've never carried a pocketbook. Yeah, weaknesses are Scorpios have a tendency to sex enslavement. And um, I'll just keep reading here. Yeah. And a liability to the overuse of stimulants. Oh. Is there anything we left out? Anybody, anything anybody wants to say or rap about? Oh, a million things. You can't say Are there? Music. At least a million. Anything that we can use on the air? Mm. Burn the city. Anything you've always wanted to say on television that nobody ever gave you the chance to Yes, say. yes, I got what am I doing? I got one. They just passed out in the executive room upstairs. <laughs> I got one, and I don't even think it's wrong. Okay. Well, like the air that we're all breathing is not clean, right? You're aware of that, right? right. Everybody is. Anybody that looks out there. <coughs> Consider this. The only way to solve it seems to be to convince GM, Ford, Chrysler, 76, Union, Shell, and Standard to go out of business. Mm -hmm. All right. Which is, which is merely a setup for the punchline, which is fat chance. Yeah. Especially since four of them are my sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, we'll be back another season. Uh, no, please. Stephen, could you do a number four, do you think, before it's uh, too late? Number six. Please. please. Number nine. Number nine? That's always been my... Will I get to the end? Yes. Before you know it. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. Four and twenty years ago, we're coming to this life. The son of a woman and a man who lived in strife He was tired of being poor And he worked like the devil to be more kind of poverty now upsets me so night after sleepless night I walk the floor and I want to know why am I so alone where is my woman can I bring her home have I driven her away is she gone The sun rises and I'm driven to my bed I see that it is empty and there's devils in my head I embrace the many-colored beast I grow weary of the torment Can there be no peace? And I catch myself just wishing That my life would simply cease
Jefferson Airplane. You, you guys are maniacs. Dick said goodbye to all the nice people and you just keep on playing. Grace, what gifts? You see, kids, there really was a Woodstock even before that one the Spin Doctors played at. Well, that was such an amazing trip back in time, I think I need to go lie down for a while. So next time you need some excitement in your life, I hope you'll join us here on the VH1 Archives.